Turns out, if you activate different parts of the brain, you can not only create memories, but remove them. This has a lot of consequences because memories have been demonstrated to be heritable. You can inherit your parents' fears. This is complicated by the building of a comprehensive map for epigenetic locations that could be turned on or off, which change gene expression. We'll talk about it. I'm not sure which sci-fi and or horror dystopia we're walking into. And people often ask me, do scientists read sci-fi? Yes, and a lot of them take inspiration from it. In the last 10 years, it was discovered that if you exposed mice to fearful stimuli, along with something neutral, like a smell, something like cherries or lavender, their offspring would continue to be afraid of it for several generations. When this paper first came out, people thought, no way. That cannot be true. But it was demonstrated to be a real phenomenon. It was also discovered that memory is interpreted and stored with two major parts of your brain, the hippocampus and the amygdala. The hippocampus helps determine spatial memories, context, whereas the amygdala determines how you feel about it. If you activate the amygdala, creating fearful associations, you can create a false memory. They can even simulate being shocked in association with it, the way that it felt to a mouse, and interpret that with something neutral. They start to become afraid of that neutral thing. But you can also remove that memory. By altering associations in the hippocampus, the part of the brain that determines context, but not the amygdala, fearful memories can be overridden with pleasurable ones. This one is actually really funny because they gave the mice the memory of being shocked in the presence of female mice. Did they create mice that are kind of into BDSM? Sort of. Something else has been created that complicates this a lot. A complete map, an atlas of every location of a gene that can be turned on and off using epigenetic imprinting. That means not your DNA itself, but the way that it is expressed. We are learning more and more epigenetic mechanisms. I discussed a prion inheritance model last week. The ones that we are most familiar with are chromatin. The way that DNA is held together, it physically blocks little molecular machines from coming in and expressing it, but those can be turned on and those can be turned off. Using epigenetics as a mechanism of gene therapy has already happened. It's happened for prion diseases, which means it's probably going to work for Alzheimer's. More so, we don't understand all of the interactions. If turning off a gene could create a memory, an association. For the first time, we have access to that. And there's a lot of nefarious ways that these could be used. If you're a writer, I think you'll have some fun. So which sci-fi dystopia are we walking towards? Or is it somehow all of them together and the idiocracy simultaneously? Transgenic mice, anyone?